I think it would be very bold to make that prediction. Um, you know, we're going into a world where things are changing very fast and there's new opportunities coming. And we see that happening already today with AI. Um, we see new use cases coming up. We see people kind of getting new creative ideas about what they can do. Um, to give you an example, um, we're very active in the planning and scheduling of resources, uh, where people kind of you know, build plans and schedules, allocate resources and all that. And I've seen a very beautiful example, for example, recently where one of our customers said, hey, one of the most labor intensive things for me now is to create all these bookings and to input all the data. And actually that data is coming in in many different formats, in PDF files and emails. And what they did is they collected a lot of that information, historical information. They basically used a cloud AI function to start training a model. And that's an example of how they eliminate a lot of labor and manual work, and they have very good results with that. But that's something that, you know, probably six months ago, nobody would have thought of. Maybe people would have thought it was not feasible, um, but it's proven to be very, very feasible uh, these days. So I would say with all the evolutions that we see now, uh, we will continuously see popping up new opportunities, new ideas, and I think that's also the future, you know, putting yourself into a position that you can actually make those steps. And it really starts with building, for example, a unified data lake, uh, what we like to call a digital twin of your operation, making sure that you have good quality data that you can act upon with new technologies that are coming in. I would say yes, um, but then again, I don't think it's gonna be a big differentiator, okay? In the sense that you're gonna have to be forced to start using all these skills because everybody is on a quest to go better, faster, cheaper, okay? And there's a lot of pressure. So everybody really will have no other choice but being able to leverage those features and capabilities to remain competitive. So it's kind of a mainstream thing. The only thing I would say is everybody has access to those capabilities. You know, we have cloud functions, you can buy the most sophisticated engines to do whatever job you want. But the key differentiator for everybody is the data, okay? Um, if you have exclusive data, if you have exclusive data sets that you can use to train models and to really get results, that's the key thing that people need to be looking at. You need to look at your business, your operation, your environment, and look for those opportunities where you can differentiate on the data set level. So people that are building, again, that unified digital twin, that's the foundation of this type of environment. You, you make sure that you're kind of set to start leveraging the data that you have and to start using those functions that become widely available. Well, in terms of skills, I think I would hope not that much. Why? Because we have to make sure that those functions are easy to use. So the people that would work in an operation, and that's why, you know, probably five, six years ago when we started building AI functions into data miner for anomaly detection and all that, we kind of refer to it as augmented operation in the sense of it shouldn't be there very explicitly. It should be there when it needs to be there and it needs to assist people and make their job more easy, more error, uh, you know, proof and, and all of those things. So I would hope that everybody looks at this as not a sophisticated technology, a complex technology, an engineering oriented thing, but something that you integrate into your operation in a way that it comes very natural and it's basically part of the workflow of people and it allows them to do things faster, better and cheaper because ultimately that's what you want to achieve. I think the biggest challenge for a lot of organizations is that they will be not ready in terms of the data and how they can leverage it. There's still a lot of companies out there that, you know, if you look at the data in an organization, and when I talk data, I'm really talking about everything. I'm, t I'm talking about, I have people, they have names, they have contact information and phone numbers, they have contracts, but you have bit rates and you have frequencies and you have satellite transponder capacity. If you look at the data sets that organizations have today, it's very scattered. Um, and it goes from, you know, across many different systems that are not interconnected, um, even down to some data sitting on spreadsheets, different formats and all that. 
And my biggest advice is if you want to be ready for that future, the first thing you have to do is build that very solid data foundation. Making sure that you have good quality and hygiene in that data, it's standardized. But for example, also security. You know, If you have a lot of data, there's also certain risks in terms of security. Is it well protected? You need to make it easy accessible, but at the same time, make sure that it's not being misused. So I, my biggest advice these days is Look at your organization, look at finding a way and a strategy to unify that data lake, that data set, that digital twin, to be able then to start leveraging those functions. Mm -hmm.